A warm welcome to your Barbados Today evening news update for Thursday, March 17. The burial ground at Newton Plantation is set to get a Barbados $34,000 boost from the Tourism Development Corporation. Speaking during the presentation ceremony on Thursday, Chairman of the TDC Mark Thompson says... The burial ground is a well-kept secret. However, his corporation is looking forward to its development as a major attraction. We just uh, are putting some seed money mm -hmm. to kind of help push along the development process. I mean, after the interpreter's signage and you build up the website here, which, you know, will probably help in terms of um, people interacting with the website and help drive development because you got to raise a lot of money. But the idea, as I know it, is to build a structure basically a sort of a museum, a memorial site that will, that will um, you know, deal with the, the, the history aspect of it, as well as when you come to the site and given what it is, there are probably going to be a range of emotions that you're probably going to go through. Each person is going to probably feel different emotions. And I think um, the project will live and die on how successful that is. Deputy Director of the Barbados Museum and Historical Society Kevin Farmer says the funds will assist the outgoing Phase 1 development of the Newton Enslaved Burial Ground. He revealed that the money will be used to create interpretation signage and a website that will allow locals and visitors to have a deeper understanding of the importance of the burial ground. This Phase 1 is in fact part one of a much larger project, which is the, a development of a heritage district that will incorporate a memorial uh, to be designed by the world-renowned architect Sir David Ajayi, um, in which the Prime Minister of Barbados uh, gave a press conference on November 30th last year. And that memorial is to break ground in November of this year and is expected to be, I think, uh, finished within a year to, I believe, 18 months. And it is about the memorialization of what is one of the more unique burial grounds in this hemisphere. Uh, Newton is in fact the space where one can actually locate the burial ground for the enslaved who worked on a particular plantation. Um, that is extremely rare and quite unique. In other news this Thursday, a call to parents to be on the lookout for signs of random bruising and bleeding on their children. It's coming from registered nurse Virginia Leandre Broom, who says it could be the first sign of hemophilia, a condition that causes bleeding or bleed for no obvious reason and without a known injury. Leandre Broom says even though cases on the island are low, it should not be dismissed. Here in Barbados, hemophilia, we have two types, uh, hemophilia A and hemophilia B, and um, both of them need to, to have a factor to survive. Any bruises, any bounces, even the little babies, even creeping on their knees, they can get bruising, they can get bleeding. So these simple things, we have to need, they need to have a factor. And most of the times, we've seen all of them are male, and the carriers are the mothers, okay? And um, what we have realized, if we embrace a lot of the mothers, because when Erica came, she was a young mother by herself with her um, grandmother. And um, she was crying, crying all the time because she did not understand what was going on. They told her if, her, if, she, if the child falls off the bed, he can bleed and die. Or if he creeps too much, he can get bruised. Or if he plays because he likes to play cricket, he was never a child that kept quiet. So he's playing cricket now, and now his arm is swollen. So then he has to have factor. And um, this has worked out so great for most of our patients because when we've embarked on the World Federation of Hemophilia with Dr. Alexis, who is the specialist that deals with that, and she's embarking on registering all of these patients, ensuring that each one, especially the hemophilia is, are able to get factor eight free. Leandra Broom made the comment as the Barbados Hemophobia Association and Grady Marketing Inc. made a donation to the QEH today. Dr. Sonia Brown, Minister of State in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, welcomed the kind gesture and she urged Barbadians to continue to lend a helping hand wherever possible to the island's main hospital. Although there are not many in terms of population uh, hemophiliacs in the country, they do need the services of the hospital. I have a whole family or two that are hemophiliacs, 
And I know they have it hard. I know what it means to be a hemophilia. Obviously not personally, but from a professional basis. And for them to come forward and offer this generous donation of the scale and the cheers to the, the, to the department, the hematology department, is I can only say thank you. Um, this is the start of something good. Um, I want to say whether the donation is large or small, the Queen Elizabeth Hospital Ministry of Health are very appreciative. Many people do not know about many of the donations that are passed on to the QEH, something as little as a pack of diapers that a patient has left behind when the families leave, they donate to the ward. Some people come back and offer what they can to the ward, and each and every donation, no matter how small or large, is appreciated. Now to the latest COVID-19 update. 103 new cases of the viral illness were recorded from the 725 tests conducted on Wednesday by the Bestos Santos Public Health Laboratory. The cases comprised 47 males and 56 females. There were 18 persons under the age of 18 and 85 who were 18 years and older. There were 49 persons in isolation facilities, while 997 were in home isolation. The death toll from the virus stands at 326. There's regional and international news after this short break. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. More oxygen. Means more energy. Means more adventure. Pure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Pure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. To regional happenings, St. Lucia's Commissioner of Police, Milton Desier, says police will continue to be relentless in their fight against crime despite the recent tragic killing of one of their own. More on this report from HTS News Force. Constable Timet was shot dead by gunmen who seriously wounded his partner, Isaac Calvin. Calvin is currently listed in critical condition at hospital. Heavily armed assailants were reportedly lying in wait and ambushed the two officers who were acting as armed security escorts on a routine drop-off in the waterworks area in Castries late Saturday night. The bandits opened fire indiscriminately on the officer's vehicle. It's just a sad feeling yeah, for the force and um, everybody sympathizing, especially with the family of a hardworking officer. The deadly ambush of the two policemen has shocked the entire island. The officer the day, Timet was yes, said to be a model police, police officer, and citizen, and a family man. He reportedly worshipped regularly at the Grand Riviere Roman Catholic Church. That community see, and fellow parishioners are said to be devastated now, by the news of this appalling slaying. On the international front, Russia denies that it has defaulted on its debt to the international creditors. The country said on Thursday that it has made payments due to two bonds, but some creditors say the funds have not been received, leaving it unclear whether the country faces its first default on international debt in more than a century. We got the details from Reuters TV. Russia may be on the brink of its first default on international debts since the Bolshevik Revolution more than a century ago. On Thursday, the state of play was far from clear. The previous day, Moscow had been due to pay $117 million in interest payments on two dollar-denominated bonds. Some creditors told Reuters that the funds had not been received. A raft of international sanctions complicates the already complex transactions involved, not least as Russia's central bank is among the institutions targeted. However, the Kremlin insists the payments have been made. Officials said Thursday that they would update the market later on whether the money had reached Citibank, the payment agent. There was no immediate comment from the bank's relevant branch in London. Russia's finance ministry has said it will make payments in rubles if it can't transfer dollars due to sanctions. 
However, ratings agency Fitch says that would still constitute a default if it's not corrected within a 30-day grace period. Well, that's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.